Well, not too much has changed since then, except for an occasional burst of life. And one of the only live and certainly most alive weekly television shows is Saturday Night Live. And out of Saturday Night Live has come an array of characters familiar to us all. The Coneheads, Saturday Night Samurai, Roseanne, Rosanna, Dana, and those wild and crazy guys, to name just a few. One night last year, we were introduced to two new dark characters. They were dressed in black suits, white shirts, skinny black ties, shades and lids. The Blues Brothers, Jake on vocals and Elwood on harp. They had come to remind us of a fascinating music we rarely hear today. You're hearing some of it behind me right now. The Blues Brothers are Dan Aykroyd, Elwood, and John Belushi, Jake. A few weeks ago, Aykroyd and Belushi and I sat around in what John Belushi calls the vault, or the sound room. It's a small room in John's New York City home, with carpeting covering the floor, the walls, and the ceiling. The room contains thousands of records in and out of their jackets, on shelves, on the floor, in corners, and under the couch. A superior sound system, an electric guitar, empty beer and pop cans, and an assortment of cigarette butts. It had what one would call that lived-in look. After about an hour or so of listening to records, passionately selected for us by Aykroyd and Belushi, we asked them where this passion for the blues started. John Belushi was the first to answer. I had like my own club, you know, where I would hire groups, and Dan Fogelberg worked for us, you know, way back. Yeah, he'd like open up for us, and we like work for like seven bucks a show. And uh, I'd always put it in my satire, you know, so... I figured I was accepted, and, and acting was a little easier. I mean, I got the, the jobs, it was a steadier gig, and uh, I could do what I, I wanted to do, I didn't have to... Uh, Maybe you weren't that good a drummer. No, yeah, hey, plus I, I, mean, I don't know. I don't uh, do it anymore. I did play with the uh, Dead Boys though once. Did anyway, you play with the Dead Boys? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I yeah, played it to Johnny Blitz, Blitz Benefit. Okay. Uh, when, so I played a couple songs there. But, uh, so it was mostly like white rock and roll that I was into for a lot of years, you know? And... Uh, See, and I, I, but that, I, you couldn't really get into it, even though I was acting, there was nothing that could really like change. I mean, how can I be better than the Almond Brothers, you know, or something, you know, geez. So, like, I, it seems a lot of music just stopped around 1973, you know. It's true, but it's all coming back again, I think. Well, yeah, I mean, it goes in cycles, uh -huh. but so I just got tired of listening to it. I just found some, myself listening to all my old albums and uh, some new ones, you know, but. Uh, I got turned on a blues when I was filming Animal House in uh, Eugene, Oregon. I mean, really into it, you know what I mean? I but, saw this uh, band, but... But we'd done, we'd done before, before oh, yeah, we met Curtis. Oh, yeah, we did it on the show. That's before right. we went, he Curtis. met this guy called Curtis Salgado, who had an amazing collection of blues and was in one of these small label blues bands, like... Downchild Blues Band from Toronto. Yeah. Lamont Cranston Blues Band from Minnesota. These are, are these are hardcore road groups that go on the road. They've got horns. They travel. They do road houses. They do bars. They and nobody's working. heard of them, you know, except people who, who like the blues and, and look for them, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like they haven't really broken nationally, you know? And, they and haven't I, got the access that we have. Yeah, exactly. Right? Well, so 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 anyway, we, we were inspired by this, and, and, and we did the but Blues Brothers that, warming up the audience on Saturday night. They'd come in for a dress show and an air show. We'd go out and do a couple of songs. What's this I hear? There's a whole lot of talk. The people say they try to put the kids. Hey, yeah. Tell me what you did. You can call it what you want. I call it messing with the kid. Someone to love them really bad. Someone to please them all the time. K-O-L-A, San Bernardino. So you wanted to hear it, and he, we, we learned it, and we did it on the show. Then he went off to film Animal House. I stayed. I could have been in that movie. Then well, I well. <laughs> you blew no, I stayed. I stayed to write uh, to write the show. You know, I wanted to write Saturday Night. I made that decision. He went off to do it, and he came back all turned on to the blues. You know, <laughs> screaming about the blues. I was going, John. You know, I know. What have I been telling Where you? Been? Where have I been? Well, I mean, I, I, not knowing, I, I, I'd been listening to it. You know, because also early Stone stuff was R and B. You know, but. I have the typical image that most people have, you know, of the blues. It's that it's boring, it's this, but it's all, it's very funny, you know, they don't understand. And it's fun. So, 
this was a whole new area that it, it started to excite me. So I figured, geez, if, it's, if it excites me so much, it, might, it must excite other people. Really? Because boring. you're a boring guy. I'm a <laughs> boring guy. I'm excited. What the hell? Probably everybody will be excited. <clears throat> Who knows? So and the people I spent the last year when I wasn't working, you know, carrying around, trying to learn as much as I could, you know, about blues. I mean, people had learned, you know, I'd ask people about it. They said, oh, God, I know all that stuff. You know, I learned that, you know, 1961. Yeah, because everybody, every you player alive I was trading now. baseball cards at that time. I didn't know anything exactly. about it. Exactly. And every, every player al alive now, you know, from all the bands, that's where they oh, got they their roots. That stuff. That's, yeah, right. So it wasn't my roots, you know. It was like white rock and roll into, you know, black blues back, you know, it was a step. Uh, You're totally into it now. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I was looking around the records you have in your oh, room yeah. here. Just this I spent a lot of money getting these records that I bought them at the time. It'd be a lot easier, but I buy as many as I can and listen to as much as I can. But so I, mean, I spent a whole year listening. I mean, I, I drive my friends nuts, you know. I'd carry albums with me when I would just go see somebody or I'd go to work or, or cassettes and keep listening and finding. And it took a year to find the right, to pick 12 songs. It took that t that long to find the right ones. What is it about the blues that gets you so turned on? Could you verbalize it, or is it just, you know? Uh, it's more emotion. I don't know what it is. It's pure, pure emotion. Really pure rhythm. Emotion, pure, know? pure mood. Rhythm and motion. And Shake emotion. it up, you know, it's, I guess. And it seems easier, you know, that, and, you know, simple music, you know? I think it's the same thing that rock and roll basically is. It's well, the same, sure, simple, sure, sure, of primitive course. kind of thing. Right. I mean, I mean you know, I mean, rock and roll is based on the blues. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. You I know. know. I don't know this song uh, that Cripple Clarence Lofton did. 1936. He did. 36. But that song, you know, it pre the, the the written lyrics even predate that. I mean, and yeah. the version that he does is totally like, unrecognizable from the version you've heard Willie Maybon do and the one we do. You know. We've been talking to Jake and Elwood Blues about the old music they get their sound from. See the concepts of like you know uh, you know uh, uh, mojo or, or or you know like uh, blues with a standard, feeling yeah, you know, those, yeah. those old standard songs they they go back to the the twenties you know from from these shack. from these country uh, slide guitar players and and harp players you and know all these guys who's got the shaft the record companies you know and we and these rock bands just take this music and become famous I mean uh, when the Stones did the show Mick Jagger came down here in this vault here you know and we. We played some of this uh, stuff for him, and then he would go into the albums and put on these songs for me. Uh, that inspired take, him. Take out some insurance, you know, mm -hmm. Jimmy Reed, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, wear something green, you know, stuff like that. He's getting, you know, and they started out as a rhythm and blues band. That's all they wanted to do. You know, they went, they progressed into that. Uh, we're starting out as a rhythm well, and blues. Well, Brian band. played that great blues harp, right? Sure. Yeah, oh, for That's sure. And Ronnie doing. Wood plays a great harp too. Mm -hmm. And they love that stuff, you know. And so do we. And like, so we got what we did with the Blues Brothers. We put the group together. We got the best musicians in the world doing the simplest music. And we said, you know. Do whatever you want, guys. You know, have fun. Steve Cropper, Duck Dunn, they're they're producers now. Essentially, they were they were the you know the, the, the string section, of, the backbone of Stax back Records yeah, for a while. So, uh, Sam and Dave, and Soul Nelson Man, and right. they did Soul sure, Man. The absolutely. They're the giants. The Bartes, all that. Stuff. The MGs, Booker, 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 Booker T and the MGs. Ninety nine and a half is, uh, begins uh, uh, Groovy, which is originally uh, Floyd Dixon tune, which we changed to a reggae tune during the middle of rehearsal because I couldn't do it like Floyd Dixon. I couldn't understand why I couldn't get the vocal down. Uh -huh. And then I just, right in the middle of the song and during rehearsal, I changed the accent into a Jamaican accent. And it worked. And it just, it, it felt good. And we so threw all those things we, we knew about Jamaica, we you know, We spent in Jamaica, we had Danny. And we like Did that you have place, some spliff you know? at the some rehearsal spliffs, hall? Some spliffs, man. Well, that song is for those people who like the spliffs. The drums man. red, man. I mean, here you are uh, on television every week. But what I'm getting from you is that underneath all, the biggest fantasy is to be a rock and roll star. That's it, pal. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I must say, I, 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 I got to lay back here. Maybe that's your uh, <laughs> I was. Uh, it was mine. Yeah. It was the only way I thought I could get the girls, you know? It was either... <laughs> it was. It's kind of like the way to... Uh, it's not a common one. I must clarify it's, here. It's, it's not one it's, that I share. You know, I, I, I'm... I'll tell you what. I was involved in it. You know, it was like I liked the music and I liked doing it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, my real big influence that time was like the Rolling Stones. 
the Blues Brothers fills a real vacuum in the, the whole musical space. If people play the record and, and buy it, I, I think it's a party album, you know, primarily. Know what? Uh, and, and there's some, you know, it's 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 not all pure straight music. Like there are a couple of cuts on the album that are that are definitely made to, you know, they're sort of insane to make people laugh. I <laughs> yeah. think, you know, I mean, groove I me is that way, rubber well, biscuits that way. You know, there's a rap and I don't know. There's a rap and messing with the but kids. But that's what blues is, you know. It's funny. It's humor. Oh, do you want to do a song? Yeah. Okay, it's a song by the Chips. Well, I think we're ready for a blues revival because everything you know, yeah, whatever goes so. around comes around. I hope it helps. Really, there's so roll. many, and, and it's just, it, I hope it helps the people who are playing in blues today who are, who are still happening. Like he, Muddy's out there, you know, he's happening. He, he's at the bottom line. You can see Muddy Waters. You can see Albert King. Uh, you see know, Fenton Robinson, Fenton yeah. Robinson, uh, 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 Lightning Hopkins, uh, Hopkins uh, uh, John Lee Hooker. Hooker. He will could come Blue to your kids, town and play alive. Boogie Chillin'. I mean, he'll do it. You know, it's, it's like they're around. They're accessible bookers. You know, fashion guys. Yeah, you, know, you gotta do that. I mean, so we got excited. Yeah, so we were excited about it. Maybe we were a little naive, you know. I mean, well, we, we were white bread naive. Cynical, white is what we are. A lot of cynical people in the rock business, you know what I mean? And yeah. because I guess we're just as naive as we are, we just said, oh, "God, let's do a blues album," and we okay. did it. Now I know you're both into the blues, and you said you come from rock and roll. You're right. Rock, how, are you? Were you? Are you a big rock and roll fan? <laughs> I, as I say, uh, you know, mainly it was it was, it was trying to catch whatever uh, soul or R and B shows mm -hmm. came through Montreal or the area that I, I was living it. in, you know. Uh, and uh, jukeboxes mainly, and you know, like uh, Mustang Sally. I gotta say, I love Mustang I Sally. That's where it. my my head's at, you know. Yeah, so, you've always, so you've always been into. I never heard of the Almond Brothers before he turned me, because I'm from Canada, you know. And they, what you know, it's we're all ice heads up there. We're half frozen half the time, you know. <laughs> the uh, the lobe falls asleep, and uh, and that's it, you know. Uh, so You'll he turned me on to the, the spring. Yeah, right, exactly. Thaw time. <laughs> he turned me on to the Almond Brothers. I'd I'd never heard Southbound. <laughs> Until yeah. we took a drive down south, he played it in the in the tape. Did you like it? It was a symphony, a symphony. Yeah. It was it was fantastic. <laughs> you, know, and, uh, we, we, you know, here it was um, I was hearing real American music, uh, you know, uh, on a modern scale for the for the first time. You know, but that's I mostly mean, uh, blues, you know. But more the sure monkeys more. is what we got up north. You know, I mean, uh, <laughs> John, somebody told me that you were a big uh, Black Sabbath and uh, Led Zeppelin fan. He is a heavy metal freak. He won't <laughs> admit it now. Yeah, but when we walked in here, we the, what, the record that was on the turntable was Black Sabbath. Oh yeah, I tell oh, you that. sure. On John uh, Belushi's record player, that was what was sitting there. Are there standout shows in each of your minds? Favorite that shows? Favorite. Are there little gems that stand out in your mind? Every show, every one of those Saturday nights has got like a, a real turkey or a couple of turkeys in it and a couple of gems, you know? Every writer, if he chooses to, can produce his own piece. Right. Go out there and, and that's what Lorne Michaels has done. He's, he's given everybody, he's saying, listen, these are the facilities you can learn how to produce if you want. That's what we did with the Blues Brothers. I mean, we said we got the contract to do it. Then it was, we would do just what we want to do. We do what we want to do. You know, like if anybody suggested, well, we want to do this song, this song, we I'd listen to everybody. You know, we listen to who to get for the group, what group to get, mm -hmm. and say yes, yes, and then go and do what we wanted to on our own. You can't be forced to say you like, have to make a single. We had a we, meeting. You know, at either the... we've got the goods mm -hmm. or we don't have mm -hmm. the goods. You do what you do. You can't try something that. that, that but on, on, a, do. on a particular show, isn't yeah. like time allotted to each. Each one of you, because like there's, oh, everybody gets a spot. Oh, you mean on Saturday night show? On Saturday night Not show. Not sometimes. I mean, sometimes. On Saturday night show. It depends oh. how it's written. Depends. You know, it depends uh, who gets what and uh, how the writers feel who can do the best job in whatever scene, you know? Sometimes I, you know, I like to do as little as possible because it was last year I was flying in back and forth to move the movies and I just said, please don't give me anything. But this season you've been doing quite a bit on the first uh, bunch of shows. Yeah, they've been throwing me in there. Oh, sure, people, sure. People like who are into barbed uh, wire, into Saturday Night Live people are running over so me. into it. I mean, uh, yeah. and there's a tremendous fascination not only with the show, but with the whole process of live 90 minutes every week. I think most people are aware that it's 
a tremendous I mean, it's just a tremendous undertaking. It's, I would not do television left with this was live. Like, yeah, there's no way. No, I mean, the slime prime time stuff is not for me or for us. We don't do that stuff. Mm -hmm. Live TV is exciting. There's a risk there. Tape, you know? tape TV is not there's exciting. A risk. I mean, a live album is exciting to do. A live show is exciting to do, exciting to hear. That's why this album is exciting. This next song is going to feature the horn section. It's a song by Downchild Blues Band called Almost. I got everything I need Almost I got everything I need Almost But I don't got you And you're the thing I need the most I guess I guess Ooh, people God. pretty well know that we're you know that he's Jake and I'm Elwood. Uh, I know these are the the characters, the alter egos we take on, you know, <laughs> because w the whole thing is a theatrical thing. We come from a background of we, we worked in Second City, which is an improvisational theater school. I might say it's a school because yeah. it teaches you how to to write on your feet. You know, we we used to go out. I mean, the process is very simple. We do a set show and then go out and improvise after that. Is go out to the audience and one actor would go out and say, "Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do some off the cuff scenes." Uh, give us uh, an occupation. Some guy yells out, lawyer. Okay, give us a place. In a bathroom. A ba bathroom right. in a bus station, you know. So right. then we proceed to do a scene about a lawyer in a bathroom, bathroom of a bus station. Can I try it with you Right off now? the... No, no. no, no that's, no, those no, days are no, past. No, no. I mean, there were... Okay. Those are, uh, you, you know, ask. because you, you can do. die. You can die if you improvise, you, you know. Die. Improvising. Uh -huh. See, that allowed you, uh, at Second City, they, they, they expect you to fail it about half the time. But the so. thing is, we it, it taught us how to wear hats and glasses and to work with costumes and to be <laughs> uninhibited, you know? So, I mean, really, it's a theatrical thing. Like, like you know, a Greek theater has the mask, you know? Well, the Blues Brothers have the shades and the sunglasses. And the it's soul like, patch. And the soul patch and the, and the, the suits. The suit, uh, that was the suit is important. It's a uniform, and it's and I without it, the act would would be nothing. Tell you why the suit the suit came about. I mean, the idea for the suit. The dark suit, the black. Well, line. I played this character called Shelley Bayless. Uh, On a piece uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, called Beatnik Cafe. Like I think it was. I don't know. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was uh, uh, the minor thing. Right there. We did this Beat Cafe. That's right. I, I play the most paranoid comic in the world. Yeah. Uh, okay. Know. Now, what happens with a lot of the paranoid comics and paranoid jazz musicians of the '50s were that there were a lot of them were shooting speed. You know, you know, like Lenny Bruce type guys, and. Uh, so uh, they wore shades. No, they wore shades, but they wanted they wanted to look inconspicuous because they didn't want to and look straight. Fun. They wanted they to look, look straight. straight. They wore suits. They wore suits. They wore black suits with black ties and white shirts. They made them look like insurance men, hoping that they wouldn't draw attention to themselves. And they would, they'd wear these black hats, and they always wore sunglasses day and night. You know, with these little soul patches on their lip. <laughs> they they so, blew their cover with it. So they thought so instead of so be, so they draw attention. You know, it'd be one o'clock in the morning. They have these dark shades on so it basically looks like a, a, a 50s hipster junkie yeah Can't but it also it, it also could be the blues brothers also with the suits and the car they drive which is an old uh, a dodge police interceptor they look like cops cops they look like hit men they look like chauffeurs, like limousine chauffeurs with the dark suits. They look you know? like rabbis. Some guy thought they look like uh, Hasidics, you know. Hasidic Jews, right? I mean. uh, uh, God, I mean, there, there's there's so many dimensions to the costume, and it, the, but the fact is that the simple thing is that Jake and Elwood aren't, aren't any of those things. Would just they're just like musicians, you know. It's like, you know, yeah. they, and they may look threatening or or straight or heavy, but they they really just want to play the music. And we'll be back with our conversation with Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi, relationship between Saturday Night Live and the NBC censors.
So we are there any really room. funny fights? I mean, like a story. Oh, are there wonderful fight? meetings where yeah. where uh, you know Lauren is there and the <laughs> the censor and then the supervisor of this of the standards and practices branch and then uh, you know his supervisor and maybe a uh, a vice president maybe of programming a lawyer. and they're all you know they're all sitting there and uh, it's it's uh, talking about pussy whip you know it's uh, you know deciding whether pussy whip should be a commercial or not or uh, you know what uh, what is it you know it's like uh, whip as it was for cats it was the yeah. Dessert so they dessert chopping for cats. I mean, you know, uh, uh, you know. So uh, Colonel Ligus. It's great. Kentucky, that's right. Kentucky, Kentucky fried, fried chicken. chicken right. Right. That's right. So that's uh, that's what they talk about there. You know, uh, so, yeah. and they sort of adjust their ties nervously and uh, flinch I get, I get and it. smile. It's really great. It's a good fun. It's a, it's a wholesome show. It really is. I mean, you know, it's no way. <laughs> <laughs> it's who cares. <laughs> Oh, it is. You don't like it. Turn it off. We explain, uh, you know, the context in which something is written, and if they disagree with it and think that, uh, you know, certain words like bulges or head cream or blowmaster. I mean, I, I've mentioned, I've mentioned hair products here. You know, yeah. really, uh, you know, blowmaster and head cream. They're uh, hair products, folks. That's you know, right. That's right. and if she doesn't think they're hair products, uh, or he, or he, the other guy doesn't he think they're hair it. products, well, they. Uh, yeah. You know, they'll, 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 they'll object to it, and sometimes we, we lose with them, sometimes we win. And hey, bartender. I said, went falling the other night, you know, started drinking, and got, I blew each and all I my friends. I blew each and all my friends, which Felt means so I... I had to blow again. I mean, and mean he came up to me that, this that he bought them all a drink. That's what I the mean, lyric means. What it really means. Yeah, it really it means, means that, but, uh, you know, he they was... thought it was something, well, something else. You need to edit it out of this radio program, because you just... You're not going to... That's right. Well, I mean, if you... I mean, it's on, on the record. Floyd Dixon does it, you know. Feeling that out of all of the not ready for prime time players, you two are like almost. maybe really close, <laughs> really close friends. Yes. Uh, uh, when did you two meet? Do you go back a long way? Uh, actually, we went on the show. We actually, on the really show. on the we we met we met up up north uh, briefly, yeah. you know, and backstage at Second City briefly, and I think we did a couple of sets at Second City. That is yeah, where we improvised yeah. together, and. Uh, up there at the time, yeah. And, uh, yeah, John, I think he wanted me for the radio show. You wanted me to yeah, come down, come down uh, for yeah. the National Lampoon radio show. And I... It's an, I, a record album. No, uh, it's no, a radio show. show. Yeah, it, it was, was a, a syndicated show. Yeah, that's right. Show. It was on about 200 stuff. Good humor. Good humor. And I Good was the director of it, and I wanted Danny Honor, you know, and he didn't come, but Gilda came and Billy came. And I, I guess we... Uh, Thrown in the situation, we came, uh, we went toward each other as more or less protection, you know. I mean, yeah, when we were being sort of up for the job and they didn't want us and they, we weren't sure what was going to so happen. So we kind of uh, we, we, we well, yeah. I crashed at his house, you know, and uh, for about four months. Well, then. actually, for the first yeah, for the first year of the show, we sure if it was almost. Go I wasn't sure whether we, none of us were sure it was going to go past seven shows. So I uh, he had a slab of foam there at his place, and uh, you know, it was in the closet. and He rolled it out, and I just. Bunked in there, you know, and uh, crashed at his place, and uh, you know the cats picked at my feet at night. And, <laughs> yeah, I mean joys of joys, you know. It was, uh, <laughs> but uh, it was wonderful. And and Judy, uh, his wife, was an angel in wasn't, human it form. I mean, yeah, it wasn't my wife then. Uh, that's right, I guess, no, because you just got married, yeah, but, uh, you know, you're an old lady or whatever, uh, you know, she just, you know, treated uh, treated me fine like I was a brother, and... Uh, so, we, and we, uh, what, we... we worked out real trips, good. Like, you know, Dan and I would uh, get sick of the show, and we'd, we'd uh, get a driveway car, and... You know, uh, like a car you delivered uh, to someone uh, in the West Coast. You know, we we take it and just burn across the country in three days with the CB radio just to get away from everything. And then it was kind of, you know, we weren't that well known, you know. Mm -hmm. And we took, we did a couple trips across we the country. We spent a lot of time on the road and, uh, you know. On the road, you know. And, uh, I think we think alike. That, I think, would that be hard to do now, being as well known as you are? Would it oh, be a hassle wherever you No, know? you just no, put you it to the floor. Keep, keep I mean, driving. <laughs> you just don't stop. You, you don't, don't stop. We don't stop, you know. I mean, <laughs> It, that's the yeah, that's the essence, you know. So like part of the part of the Blues Brothers comes out when we were on the road. We talk about song, we play music, you know. I get a tape deck and just you know crank it up and listen, and uh, that was fun, you know. 
he'd drive like a madman and uh he turned me on to the allman brothers and i turned him on to ride of the valkyries uh, <laughs> wagner you know which he'd never heard uh, as we were sailing across uh, the nevada mountains you know uh, just uh, fantastic and it was a that, revelation yeah i did that in the uh, oh, that one show was at the ray channel so we're listening to great music where i just oh yeah that. the phonograph yes the phonograph they didn't know i was going to do that on the air because i was see sometimes you don't know what we're going to do until we get there until we're on the air, I go, oh, God, how am I going to end this thing? And I start riding with Valkyries and go, horses, you know, da, 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 this and that, and then screaming and going into lines from combat, you know, throwing things. And then then there was a stereo. And I don't even know how much it weighed. It must have been 200 pounds. And I finally picked it up and threw it on the ground to end the scene. I said, wow, sorry, I didn't know how to end it. <laughs> Yeah, you should try to catch the act because Belushi, the moves. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, get, really, I Look mean. the dance of this, you do it, you do it Oh, so I know, bad. but I mean, uh, you know, your flips and everything, and, uh, yeah. oh, jeez, Wish it's great. Wish flips on the radio, it would be great. Well, the thing is, well, you can hear his dancing in Soul Man. In the middle, they start cheering, and that's because Tanny's dancing. I've moved back, you know. Whoa, I can't believe it. Does the um, kind of burnout factor, we'll call it, does that ever... No. Do you ever think about that? Like, no. how fast I don't, uh, How fast people use people up these days? I mean, no. We'll just TV have to see. You know? Who knows, man? We'll just Look, have to you see. You don't go into it. I mean, we'd go into... Uh, there's a burnout factor in terms of using the media. I mean, this is one of the few yeah, interviews... This is what I mean. This is one of the few interviews we're going to do. You know? Uh... uh the whole idea of promotion is an interesting subject. Yeah, because right? well, some people believe that without promotion, the greatest talent in the world will not get. I'll numbers. tell you, I think so. I, I think it's so. true. I don't think so. Oh, definitely, definitely. No. I think there's some artists that would never have been discovered if it weren't for for proper promotion and handling, for no. sure. Like I don't feel like you should do it all the time to promote yourself. Mm -hmm. I can promote this. I'll promote the band, the Blues Brothers. You know, Danny. You know what I mean. Yeah, in a you way, me? using myself to promote them. Excellent. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you know what I mean? I am. Danny is a harp player, you know? Danny's doing me as a, as a vocalist, you know what I mean? It's, it's like, you know. Yes, but we are under the bear man. So we call him the bear man sometimes because then he gets up in the morning, uh, you know. <laughs> but uh, we are under your umbrella. I mean, I think the Blues Brothers came about because of his doggedness and his his drive. He pulled these people together, you know. We, we, we sat, we chose the songs, and it was like, you know, it was a, a real a common effort, but but mainly led by by John, you know. He it, really, it came out of trust that people it, say, you know, you say it was real nice to know they said I wanted to do something, you know, and the people say, okay, we'll do it. And they weren't sure what it was. I knew what it was. I knew exactly what it was going to be. But they all showed up on that all first came, day of rehearsal. They, they all came because, to learn the material. And, because it was Danny and, do it. and it was me because they said, well, if nothing else, I'll have a good time. This is Steve Cropper, Doc, Doc Dunn, Dunn you know, uh, Tom, Matt Murphy, Tom Scott, Alan Tom Rubin, Scott, Alan Rubin, Tom Malone, Lord, uh, Steve, Steve Jordan, Jordan, Paul Schaefer, and, and Lou Marini. Blue Marini. <laughs> Yeah. So <laughs> they they had faith in us they and joined in. us and, uh, and once they do that, you don't let them down. You know, once you don't let them down, mm -hmm. you you know you have to build a kind of a reputation in the business to do that. Once people s screw you, you know that's what happens. That's the thing about that's how people get burned in this business because there are a lot of bastards out there, man. A lot of them. A lot of people looking to rip off and exploit. That's all they want. That's all they care about is money, stuff like that. And they'll use any artist, you know, and it, it makes me mad. I mean, really mad to see what it does to a lot of artists and a lot of people and a lot of women in the business and things like that and how they're used, you know, and uh, how they can't really get a break, you know. And unless they're uh, sleeping with a photographer or a director or stuff like that. People who, you know, can't just go on just kind of their merit, you know. I think that something should be done about that in this business. I don't think we should just sit back and, and let these people go on. I think they should be exposed and be thrown out. Would you consider yourself an anarchist? 
Uh, but disciplined anarchist, yeah. Yeah, sure, I'm an anarchist. I guess, yeah, I we, guess, I guess we, we have I, to I be. feel that there, I, one, one other thing I'm not is a professional. I'd rather be an anarchist than a professional. You're a, you're, you're An anarchist is one thing. I, I'm also an, an artist. I'm also, you know, a, a good friend. I'm also uh, a, uh, uh, you know, a troublemaker. You know, I'm also uh, a... <laughs> You know, motivate. I like to motivate Decent people. Touch football player, no, a good swimmer, you know, a bad driver, <laughs> but uh, a party yeah. maniac. You're, you're, um, uh, yeah. Because I think there are too many people just kind of sitting down, letting things happen. If you shake things up a little bit, it, it creates new areas. Well, they'll never accuse you of not shaking things up, <laughs> John. I mean, uh, too many professionals. Really, Screw them. really. Get rid of them. Uh, yeah. Thanks a lot. I know that this is a, a, a rare um, kind of thing to uh, just sit and talk into a It is, as a matter of fact. <laughs> so thanks a lot. It's okay. Thank you. It was very good. See ya.